Presuasion is the process of arranging for an audience to agree with your message before they encounter it. Now that might sound like some form of magic, but it's not. It's established science. Very often we can use persuasive tactics, even uh, other kinds of influence tactics, on ourselves to increase the likelihood that we will reach our goals, that we will uh, obtain the outcomes that we hope for in a particular situation. There's research, for example, to show that if you depict for people an image of a runner winning a race, they become more achievement oriented and actually achieve their goal to a greater extent while that runner is in the background. There's another piece of research, a follow-up research, that shows that if you depict for people an image of Rodin's The Thinker, you know, the, the, the statue, they become more analytic and deliberative and they're more likely to solve problems, difficult, uh, complex problems that they're faced with. So this is something we can do to ourselves. If we have a task that re requires a lot of energy and motivation, put a picture of a runner winning a race in the corner of your computer screen where it, you'll see that cue there while you're performing the task. If you're analyzing a budget, perhaps, or developing some plan that requires a lot of strategic thinking, put a picture of uh, the thinker there, and you're more likely to uh, achieve that particular goal. The thing is, we get to control the cues in our environment that send us in directions that are likely to be successful for the t particular task we have at hand. When writing my book, Presuasion, I dedicated it to my grandchildren. And there was something I did for myself to persuade me to make that the best possible book I could develop and produce. It was to put the following image in my mind of each of my grandchildren who are young right now. Here's the image. When they're old enough to read it, I've left a copy with their parents for each of them. And I want their parents to give them the book and say, you see this? This book was dedicated to you. Well, it better be a good book. It better be the highest quality book I can arrange. And so while I was writing that book, there was, a cor there was a corner photograph of my grandkids on the screen of my computer. That picture kept me focused on quality. No shortcuts allowed. This is for, this is for my grandkids. It better be the best book I can possibly uh, generate. When I first started investigating the influence process, I actually became a spy of sorts. I went undercover to all of the major professions of our society dedicated to getting us to say yes. And I took training. I enrolled in the training programs of salespeople, fundraisers, recruiters, public relations specialists, and so on, to see what were the techniques that were working most widely across the, the range, the broadest range of these influence strategies, uh, these influence approaches. And what, what I found was interesting in that there was a particular kind of practitioner within those influence professions who rose to the top almost invariably. It wasn't the individual who spent most of his or her time crafting the message that they sent, although that was important to them. It was that they crafted what they said and did immediately before they delivered their message. That was the differentiator between the average uh, scorers and the aces of each profession. Those people who were the highest achievers 
were persuaders. They, they acted like expert gardeners. They knew that it didn't matter how good this seed that you had might be. If you didn't prepare the earth for it first, it wasn't going to bear fullest fruit. So they cultivated the earth. They, they, they pre-treated the ground before they planted their seed with their message. They did something that caused the recipients of their message to have a positive state of mind before they encountered the message itself. The interesting question is, how do you go about cultivating the earth? How do you uh, arrange for people to be in a frame of mind that is conducive to the, uh, the message that you want to send? Um, it is to recognize, first of all, what is the central element of your message? What is the feature of your message that would make it most wise for people to uh, accept your offer, right? And then you take that dimension and go to the moment before you deliver your message and give peop draw people's attention to that idea, to that dimension. Let me give you an example. There was a study done by an online furniture store. They had uh, furniture that was uh, comfortable. They also had lower end furniture that was attractive because it was inexpensive. They did an experiment. They sent half of the visitors to their site to uh, uh, a background depiction of clouds on the landing page, uh, of the uh, wallpaper of their site. So the, the landing page had fluffy clouds on the back background. Those people rated comfort as the most important factor in buying a sofa. They spent more time searching for comfort-related information inside the site, and they preferred comfortable furniture to purchase. The other half of the visitors were sent to a site that had as its background wallpaper pennies, coins, money. Right? Those people rated cost as the most important feature for them uh, for purchasing a sofa. They searched for price-related information, and they purchased more inexpensive furniture. They preferred to purchase more inexpensive furniture uh, as a consequence. So you can see that what was the central dimension of the message, it could be comfort or it could be cost, could be installed in uh, a customer's mind ahead of time, which caused them to see that dimension as more important, to search for information relative to it, and to act on the basis of uh, a product that gave them that dimension uh, in a prioritized way. It could be cost. It could be clouds. Here was the interesting thing about that study for me. Almost no one recognized that they had been influenced by the background wallpaper. It flew under the radar. That means that this is something that's not only powerful, it's also something that we have to deal with in a, as, as, as communicators in an ethical way because we've got some things that are going to move people in our direction without them even recognizing or taking into account that we're moving them in their, in, in their direction, in our direction.